Well, hello, and uh, welcome to another episode of Literary as Feck, uh, where I, uh, Nick, and um, him. Uh, yeah, me. Yep. Uh, the two of us talk about books and, uh, and things uh, book-related. Um, so it's my choice this time, and um, this is going to happen. This is going to happen when uh, I don't read things, you know, four years ago and know that I like them. Um, occasionally, I'm gonna I'm gonna suggest something for the show. This in this case, I had bought this some years back um, in a I feel like in a museum gift shop, maybe. Um, this what is would the, the museum have been. Uh, I don't know, and I, I don't I, I would have been somewhere in Northern Ontario at the time. Um, what I mean is, would it have been related to the topic in some way? I would imagine that it was somehow yes. I'm guessing so. Okay. Um, but anyway. Uh, the book is John Tanner's uh, The Falcon. Um, do you or... have, by any chance, on the inner leaf there, do you do you have the original full title? Because like, it's something wonderful, isn't it? Like like they had in the 19th century, which was like, The Falcon, it... or oh, One Man. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, it is The Falcon, a narrative of the captivity and adventures of John Tanner. Excellent. That's quite short for a 19th century subtitle. Sometimes they would go on yes. the edges, right? <laughs> Uh, the adventures that it may be presumed to have been had between the years. <laughs> I do another thing I've always liked about books of this era is the tendency to to do this to give you a little like Coles Notes version of the entire book in the first two pages, and then this was handy for me uh, with this book, uh, <laughs> right? Because you could just I... read those. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, when I started skipping around, um, yeah. Yeah, and so and and then and then to reiterate at the beginning of every chapter, they've reprinted that from the beginning, so you get yeah. another little like, you know, a lot of uh, like Jules Verne's books. You sorry, mm. you have that. I Thank you. I have no idea who you were talking about there. Yes, no, no, no. Of course, until I pronounce it correctly. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so yeah, Frenchman. <laughs> so, so this book is is interesting in concept. Agreed. Right? Okay, um, so what this is, is uh, he, do he doesn't appear to have written it down himself. It seems as, as you read it, you reach a point where you sort of realize that this book has been told yes. to somebody who's kind of ghost written it for him. Yes, to a botanist called Edward James in uh, 1830, I believe. Yes, um, uh, partly because his English wouldn't have been up to it, potentially. Almost yeah. certainly not. In fact, he wouldn't. He, he you know he doesn't well, for reasons we'll get into in a moment. He doesn't finish schooling uh, mm. past the age of like nine or whatever he is um, uh, when he leaves his family. Do you mean uh, that he didn't have schooling? I'm gonna get me some schooling. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't get that. <laughs> And uh, I, I do hope to God you know what I'm talking about. You, you don't just think I've gone nuts, but no, uh, I do think you've gone completely mad. Oh, okay, that's oh man, man. that's the uh, awesome that's from the soundtrack to the awesome film The Nostril Picker, mm. which I haven't seen in many, many, many ah, years. Okay, well, that <laughs> so you're off, you're off the hook. Give it another watch, it's a classic, okay. yeah. Um, so. Basically, uh, his first like his first language is English, I suppose, uh, as a child. But then he almost loses it, right, because of the events of the narrative. And so that's why I'm thinking he's he's primarily like a, a an Ojibwe or a Salto language speaker by the time that he's like in his late forties when this book is created, right? So right, right. So yeah. Um, so basically. Yeah, this guy gets abducted, more or less. Um, he is from, like, a whatever, a settler, a white settler family uh, in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. And I, the, the thing I kind of like about, one of the things I do like about this book is it feels like, especially that opening segment, he's so matter-of-fact about this insane set of things that happened to him. And, like, and kind of blames himself in a kind of place, like, he kind of gives you the idea that, like, he's, like, I was just slightly, like, um, uh you know, bullheaded, stubborn, kind of like wanted things my own way, a little bit like attention deficit possibly. And then like makes a series of choices at the very beginning of the book that lead directly to him being abducted by a family of um, Shawnee indigenous uh, people who like, if I remember correctly, basically like the, like the, the wife of this guy 
has lost her child and has just said, go and find me, go get me another kid. Mm. And for whatever reason, he's like, I'll take a white settler child. That'll work fine. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's interesting because I was thinking it in, in terms of as well, if um, obviously from the point of view of the kind of 19th century Victorian morality, this is, you know, how dare they, you know, snatch a white child or whatever. Uh, but it's interesting because you would have had, you know, tribal conflict and, uh, you know, you would have had um, kidnappings and abductions, oh, yeah. people stealing yeah. people from you. So it's interesting in a way that I'm, I'm wondering if it, at this point um, some Native Americans are thinking of these white settlers almost, almost like um, the African bee is to, it's an, a particularly invasive new species but it's basically right. it's another tribe yes uh, we all steal each other's shit so why should they be any different right um right. And, no, uh, I, I, yeah. I think you might not be far off the mark in fact it's interesting quite a bit later very near the end of the book there's a part where uh tanner describes basically having an interaction with like one of the you know white fort kind of running guys um and basically the guy is like oh i i just assumed you were one of those white people who voluntarily went off like these in these indolent you know uh and so basically it gave a, a pretty clear idea that there were there were white people at the time who who went native like by choice or whatever decided i would rather live that's hunting and trapping lifestyle in the woods with indigenous people than be part of my like the settler culture, right? Well, I mean, there were all those mountain men, which John Tanner kind of became like this um, mm -hmm. um, um, guide for fur trappers and stuff later on in the narrative, right? But yeah, there were all these kind of uh, mountain men or whatever, um, either, yeah, who, like you said, went native or had been born into the wilderness. And yeah, I mean, they would have, they probably had a lot more in common with indigenous Native Americans than they would have had with, European settlers, right? Like they were more attuned to that lifestyle. Yeah, for um, sure. I mean, the French Canadian, that's, I mean, I, and I do think there was a lot more commerce and a lot more intermarriage between French Canadians, for example, here in the, uh, this part of North America, um, than there was between like British Canadians who came a little bit later on, right? Mm. It felt as though there was a much more uh, give and take kind of relationship um it wasn't quite so so ugly and mercenary as it became under the the, the crown basically right well i think it's interesting as well to specifically place um i mean probably geographically as well but i don't know enough about to, but also in, ter in terms of the timeline like for instance when you know when we were trying to do the entirety of you know Mesopotamia mm. in that other show that we do, and then you, we realize, oh yeah, this is you know an incredible huge amount of time. And yeah, we shouldn't necessarily run the entire in the entirety of you know when European settlers first arrived through to the Western expansion. Like the the relationship with Native Americans changed enormously over oh, that yeah, yeah. time, and right? So, deteriorated. Yeah, spectacularly but, later on, but but it wasn't necessarily as yeah. adversarial. So this is this is, well, John Tanner's dates were 1780, 1846. Uh, once again, apologies, I don't know his three sides, but um, I'm wondering if the this particular time, yeah, it's it's um, it's not it's it's not quite the beginning, obviously, but it's it's not it hasn't reached um, it, you're not talking trail of tears and stuff like no, that. Era. no. Yeah. We're not there. We're not there yet. We're not, and we're not there to the residential schools and the kill the Indian and the child and right. all of that. Right. That mentality that comes in in the states and in Canada and Cause, Australia. Because there's a there's a there's a there's a part in it, isn't there, where um, he catches something from some Scottish, yeah, they give him a sheet or something, and he catches something. But I don't feel as if that that doesn't you know that doesn't uh, scan as um, deliberate. No, it was like small pox like Yeah, that's no, no, no. something they that's call filthy, filthy people all hanging out with each other and making each other sick. Yeah, which is a lot of that in the book. A, a lot of just a sense of the absolute grind of yeah. life, you know. Yeah. Um, 
So I, I think, I mean, like the thing is like, we can, we can hit on a few specific things that are, that are kind of interesting, but overall it really is the narrative of somebody who uh, becomes a hunter and hunts, right? Which is what I think you find it, you find difficult. Yeah. Well, um, like you said, it's it's a. I, I'm interested actually because you you read this all the way through, right? And I'll be, I did. Yeah, and I'll yeah. be interested to see how you how you manage it because so from again, no potentially fascinating subject matter in all sorts of different ways. Uh, and I was well up for it, and it's not a particularly large book or anything like that. But and I started it, and he's abducted, and he said, and I was thinking, oh, this is yeah, this is what I expect. This is very interesting. And then after a certain point yeah basically when he starts to slightly acclimatize and he starts going hunting mm -hmm. and a lot of hunting a whole lot of yeah. hunting as you might expect i mean um shouldn't really uh, ding it you know it's it's like you know um reading a book about i don't know whaling or something and getting pissed off There's a lot of fucking well, seawater in this book you know <laughs> but um, yes. but i i just started to glaze because it's so much i mean it's so dry right like uh yes then i went here and i built a tent and then i killed a bird i ate the bird and then i got married and, it's all for fucking, and, and there's a lot of events don't get me wrong yes and i do like the it's a weird way you're right it's like equal weight is given to the exactly those two yes. things i and had again, a, i ate that bird and then i got married and had some kids yeah. and then this happened and you're like oh, wait wait what now and i should like that and i do like you know kind of terse narrative the concept but, <laughs> but but it i i was i'd gone through a few pages and i was like hang on what the fuck am I reading? Like, yeah, I just glazed over. I, 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 I won't lie. I definitely glazed more than once as I yeah. worked my way through the book. And it was, even that wasn't necessarily terrible, but it was just, why am I doing this? I'm just chewing cud. You know, I was like, I'd be in the bath for 30 minutes and then come out and go, hang on, what? <laughs> went hunting. I think I got that. And he might have got married or something along the way. So after a while, I was like, fuck this. Uh, yeah, I'm not. So I skipped. I I read about twenty five percent, and then yes, as you said, the handy chapter titles. Because mm -hmm. so, I was kind of curious what happened when he was kind of reintroduced to um, polite society. Right again, yeah. Yeah, and um, so I jumped ahead, and I think I read from about sixty percent in to the mm -hmm. end. Actually, I did actually make. Right. It. So I read about sixty five seventy percent of the book. Yeah, uh, so I think, I mean, honestly, I think you would have gotten, certainly would have gotten the gist. And that last, you know, 100 pages or so is definitely where some of the more interesting stuff is. I think. But the even that, yeah. I started to glaze over again. Like, I, Occasionally, I glazed, he, he hunts like, to the last page, right? Yeah, yeah, I was glazed like a cherry to the last page, let's put it that mm -hmm. way. Um, but I, yeah, a few things, I mean, obviously the, the one thing that jumped out more than anything is just, just how tough life was, right? Oh my, yes. Like the yeah. number of times which are like, um, we found ourselves in the snow. Ah, uh, lucky I had some matches or something because we mm -hmm. shouldn't have died. And then, <laughs> yes. yeah, just another Tuesday, you know, for this guy. Uh, yes. And 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 the, also starvation. The grind of starvation is a really. And also how mercenary people were as well, just in terms of like. You, you have these killings that happen quite a lot over mm -hmm. you know, things like, well, your brother who I shot yeah. still owes me, you know, and yeah, you fucking shot him, motherfucker. That's not the point. <laughs> and now I'm coming to claim it from you. You know, yeah, yeah. A, lot of, a lot of stuff like that. Which I, 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 a shocking amount of like uh, just spitefully killing other people's like dogs and horses. Yes, yes. <laughs> like, Although what you might expect to be in it and isn't overtly in it, or at least isn't overtly used in the, that terminology that is racism, right? Like you get a lot of different, You obviously you've got uh, white settlers in America and, and lots of different yeah. types of stuff. And they, they're all in this kind of, you know, uh, battle for survival. But there's not much of people pointing and calling names to each other and stuff like that, right? It's just all, all of them just fucking... Um, being horrible to each other, uh, which you know, but but you know what I mean. There's not much. No, I I do no. or othering or stuff like that. No, I agree, and and I think that's one of the things that's most interesting about the book. Now, I think it will be hard for a variety of reasons. It will be hard to write something like this now 
probably doesn't happen very often anyway uh, these days. But I, I do think... No, you say that, uh, Nick. But uh, when I first moved to Japan for my first two or three years, I was kidnapped by a tribe from Saitama who taught oh. me their ways before okay. I escaped back to, to Tokyo. Okay, right. Do they have different convenience stores up there? Yeah, they have something called the Circle Zoom. Okay. You haven't seen the likes of it, Nick. It's... <laughs> um, so, yeah. So I, I do think that, like, there's an element... Um, like, he really does show people warts and all, right? But you never get the feeling that, like, there's a judgment about, like, that it's, it's you know, that it's, 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 it's specific people. He's like, that person's an asshole. Right. You know what I mean? And right. that person really does seem like an asshole when you read the book. You're like, wow. Yeah. Like, that's another thing that's fascinating to me is the, is, the, is the, like, and it seemed very true to me, partly because I did live for a couple of years in a very small community in the exact area, this, which I didn't realize when I bought this. But mm. Lake of the Woods, which he keeps mentioning, that's where I lived, right? right. That's um, so that part of it was very vivid for me. The images of the kind of, um, I mean, I, I guess I just brought that with me because he doesn't actually do that much description of nature or anything like that, right? No, no. But, but I definitely had a clear image of the it's all out to kill you in this book. <laughs> swap, the swap, well, yeah, which is not untrue as well. Um, but I think the uh, oh fuck, I probably lost my train of thought. Um, railed there somewhere. Yeah, something about that area. Uh, yes, the capacity for, in a way, for forgiveness or for letting things go. Hmm. Right, because when you like say, and and this is true really of anywhere, anywhere where the community is small enough, where if somebody does something and it pisses you off or whatever, at a certain point you just have to kind of let it go because you have to continue to live with that person. You know what I mean? In that in that small group, like it's you can't you can't just get away in a way that maybe in a bigger city you can just like I'm just gonna hang out with other people. You know? Well, you yes kind of... and yes and no. I, yeah, you're, you're forced into a position where you're like, well, we have to cohabit, so let's kind of forget about that. But I don't think it goes away. It it can fester, mm -hmm. right? And then it kind of it can pop up again. As we mentioned, it you know it you know uh, sins of the fathers and all that mm -hmm. malarkey. Right. So I, I know what you mean, but I'm not sure if it's... Um, if yeah, no, no, I, I think you're right. And I, I think and I think it does even in the book, too. Like, we see both sides. Yes. We see yeah. how things... But it's, I think it's more just like I'm fascinated by the kind of the easygoing... And it's something I have seen in, in, in real life as well, this kind of like... And it's funny because, you know, he, he does adopt a very kind of laconic thing. It's hard to know, like, what... I don't know, like, what his, what his white family was like, but he just... He seems to take things into stride and, and let people <laughs> over and over again, like let him down or take advantage of him or fuck him around. And he's like, ah, well, you know, what can you do? Until finally he has to do something because it's so egregious. The guy's tried to murder him or, you know. Yeah, like that old commercial they used to have on British television. Like my Murphy's, I'm not bitter. He's very like... Um, yes. <laughs> Yeah, he's, he, he, he doesn't seem to hold much in the way of grudges, which is admirable. It's interesting because, so, like we said, apart from it maybe being a little bit stick to, uh, tough to stick to, mm -hmm. in some ways it's an invaluable record, right? A piece of history, yeah. But also, on the other hand, because of, yeah, because of his Murphy's, like, uh, uh, <laughs> right. it's also, like, I'm wondering how how much of an outlier he is. You can imagine like someone else going through the same experiences and it just they wouldn't be able to function in the way because he what he goes through is a you know is very uh fight or flight, right? A lot of people would have just been crushed mm. at the first at the very beginning, yeah, yeah, yeah. when he's first abducted. Yeah. In yeah. fact, he goes through some stuff at the the the, the family that first abducts him. Uh, you know, really treat him miserably. At one point, a guy like clocks him in the head with an axe because he's like he's he's just a lazy child. You know, he's like left out there, to, like with his head split open. And then the women of the family find him and they're like, "Oh my god!" And they nurse him back to health. Um, and then at one point, what well, isn't he just doesn't he isn't he forced face down into into sh animal shit at one point? And he he's wandering around covered in shit and some other 
you know, <laughs> folks to take pity on him. I'm like, oh, for, f- for fuck's sakes, like, let's clean you up, kid. Um, and then he gets adopted by a second family uh, who are from a different tribe, who are um, Ojibwe. Mm. And then he ends up going up into what is now Canada. I mean, at this point, the border wouldn't have really existed, right? Right. Uh, for, for white people or for indigenous people. Um, and so he ends up basically in modern, what is now modern day Manitoba and going into Northern on, uh, Ontario. Um, but, but yeah, I don't know. It's, it's fast. And then at the very end of the book as well, like he, he, it seems as though his wife is completely like colluded in his attempted murder, made it difficult for him to get his daughters back and all this stuff. And then he just kind of like, he's given the opportunity to get revenge. And it's just like, ah, no, like, She's the mother of my kids. I mean, like, I don't want to see her ever again, but like, we shouldn't have her beaten to death, which apparently the white people are all for. They're like, oh, no, we should totally have her beaten to death publicly, ideally. And he's like, nah, no. Right, right. Sure, it's all right. <laughs> but it's, a, yeah, it's, it's a shame in a way that, that, that. Oh, sorry, one more thing. I also quite like, yeah. I, don't know, I don't know if you, if you got these parts, but there's multiple raids done so there's, there's sort of an ongoing like you know what it doesn't seem like quite a war but there's something going on between the sioux mm. and the ojibwe groups that we're kind of following and every now and again some chief or chiefs or a large group of chiefs are like ah it's time to you know we're gonna go raid a village or whatever and they put together a couple of hundred guys and they go marching off and slowly people just start peeling i just i don't know if i really care all that much <laughs> like eventually they'll get to wherever the place is and there'll be three dudes left and they're like well i don't think we should probably do with this now <laughs> like yeah and then that happens at least two or three times he he keeps going on these things thinking like this is the time i'm going to get to be involved in like a proper you know fight right and it, <laughs> and it seemed really real to me <laughs> like i was just like i can totally see the human nature in that and and and, and the fact that they don't have that kind of fiercely militaristic fiercely right. hard to go right. like we will obey orders it's like i'm not feeling it today guys it's, yeah I, it's, it's, it's like if they had in brave heart you know they had, ah, a speech and then like, cut to five minutes later that's ah, a uh, good nice speech but you know you know uh, i, I, I think cold. dinner's on <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. wife's expecting me back by nine so you know um <laughs> yeah so i didn't yeah those are those are little kind of touches that because yeah it, it doesn't have the kind of the sweep in some ways of the more made up kind of stories set in this time and place, right? It is much more gran- granular. Like, yeah, it's, it's not what... Glass of the Mohicans or something like no, that. No, no. Um... So again, I see, I definitely see the value in it and, and I've enjoyed talking about it and thinking about it, but, but you know, I would be lying if I didn't hmm. say that it is. Tra- I suppose maybe... The way to approach it uh, might be because obviously we had a bit of a um, a deadline and, and to read it by or whatever. Mm, yeah, I'm wondering if it might be something that you portion out to yourself, like yes. uh, like and really small ones as well. Like like I will read ten pages a day or something like that because mm-hmm. it wouldn't be that long to get through it anyway. You know, a supplemental reading while you're doing something else, and then mm-hmm. maybe it's easier because I think you can stay on focus for that amount of time before you drift, right? So mm-hmm. that might be the way to approach it, is rather than try and read it all in one. Yeah, book. Even you, managed it, you mentioned yourself you did glaze over, so um, it, yeah, without the glazing over, I, I would imagine. So yeah, there we go. We. We've learned, and now we will teach you how to read how to this read book John properly. Canada's autobiography. Yes, yes. A yeah. bit at a time, ten pages at a time. Yeah, it still wouldn't. It would still only take you like a, a month, you know, mm-hmm. um, of of ten. And you might you might get more out of it. You might not lose some of the detail and some of the yeah. events as yeah. you are. Losing. And it is it is a worthwhile book. I am glad it exists, and I can see why it is has been afforded a Penguin Classic. Yes. yes. Although it has to be said, from what you were saying, because I picked up a Kindle, uh, the reason being, you were saying there isn't much in the way of um, no, uh, there's there's just an introduction. annotations and stuff, right? No, no, there's there's really nothing like that. No, there's just an introduction by. Um, I mean, uh, apart what, from the annotations that are already, because there are annotations. Yeah, there, that are, yeah. they were already in the book. Yeah, no, yeah, there's yeah. just two pages by um, Louise Erdich. Uh, Erdich, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but anyway, right. her. Um, 
she's quite a well-known Ojibwe author. Um, oh, okay. Like, temporary Ojibwe author. And she's Although just kind of... Notice, there's not that much in it. If you got the Kindle even of the Penguin Classics edition, I think it was only uh, $6 or something, whereas the yes. other is $3 or something like that, right? So, um, yeah, no, it is actually worth it, but uh, mark our words and, yes, and yes. yes, do what we tell you. Do as we say and not as we yes. do. This is a sipping book. Uh, not not a chugging book or whatever. Not a book you want to swallow in one gulp. Just uh, sip it slowly. Stop it, Nick. I'm getting all excited. Right. Until next time, um, me and Nick are off to chug and swallow some more in our free time. Sure thing. And um, see, see With if, that. Yeah. See you next time. I'm glad, I'm glad we got just under the wire, we managed to bring it down a few notches into the game. Yes. I was yes. worried that was a bit highfalutin for us. Yeah.